I'm a park ranger here in the Northern Cascades. I frequently respond to emergencies, search and rescue, and also do some law enforcement work myself. This summer, I was working on a trail crew about 20 miles from the Hoosman campground. I dropped back a few hundred yards from the crew to relieve myself, and I notice a large, sickly sweet odor in the air. It kind of smelt like bear feces, but it was different. As I stood there, I heard crunching twigs from down the trail, and that's when I saw this large dark figure walking upright in my direction. I turned and began to hide behind a tree. As I turned back to look, it was maybe only about 10 feet away. It was black, a bit shorter than I, no visible neck that I could see. It stopped at the tree I was hiding behind, sniffing the air with its nose pointing up. I could not see any visible eyes. I was rooted to the spot in fear and could not physically move a muscle. It then turned around, walked away casually in the same manner it had arrived. I stood there for a few more minutes to see if it would circle back around and then ran back to my crew. I refused to tell anybody what I had seen. I hope nobody has to experience such a thing. I wandered over to the other side of your website and came across a whole bunch of info on missing people, park ranger stories, and much more. Well, I'm a park ranger myself at the Grand Canyon. I've been a few years now and have asked about the most bizarre disappearances. I have had two class two missing persons, one from the South Rim in 2012 and another from the North Rim this year. Both were found dead as a result of drowning. There were other peculiar incidents in the past several years, including an employee that had a fatal heart attack in a remote part of the park. It is no joke. There is something strange going on about the park and the amount of missing persons, not just here, but everywhere, and strange deaths. Coyote Buttes. The area north of the canyon is especially creepy. It's where the last two disappearances were, the 2012 one and this year's missing person. There's a strong rumor of a skinwalker being in the area, which is not far from a nearby reservation. Legends have always been particularly bizarre. I'm very eager to hear your thoughts on this matter. I work for a city park and recreation department here in Colorado. I also serve as a district ranger for the National Park Service. I took the ranger patrolling training and love the outdoors, but... I'm not a trained scientist or a tracker. I was driving home from work one evening in 2017, and it was dusk. I was heading east on US-24 towards Berthoud Falls. There is a turnoff located before you get right to the falls that goes to a park where you can camp called Rainbow Park. I was driving down the turnoff, and when I reached the bottom of the road, I saw this huge thing looking at me. I wasn't sure what it was at first, but I really thought it was a bear. But then I saw wings, and saw that this might be some sort of mountain lion creature with wings. At least, that's what it looked like. So, I'm thinking it's a flying mountain lion. Totally confused because my brain cannot process this, it does not make any sense. Then, it jumps off the ground and takes off into the air. Not only was this amazing to see, but it was also mind-numbing. It was huge and had a very large body and a wingspan far larger than my truck. The body was more like a mix between a human and a lion, and the head looked more like a large cat. I thought maybe it was injured or I'm not sure what it was doing. I could see, though, that its wings were very strange, also very alien-looking to any kind of bird we have here on Earth. I mean, these are just my guesses. I took off into the woods, drove up the road to the park, got on my truck, still shocked at my sighting and everything around me was dead silent. I noticed right away, it was colder than usual, and things did not feel right. I had a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I just tried to shake it off as best I could and things seemed to stop for the time being. Later on, I went back to the spot where I had my sighting and there were huge impressions on the ground where it landed, going through the trees into the woods. 
I was so confused, but also scared and in awe. I've kept this a secret until now. I would love to tell everybody more about what I saw and where. I wish I could have took photos, but it all happened so fast. As scared as I was, it honestly kind of reminded me of seeing something from Greek mythology come to life, or something along those lines. I don't know what creature looks like that with wings, but man, it was something else entirely. Thank you for taking the time to read this. Hello. I'm writing this email to you because I feel that I'm being followed by something here in the woods up here in Pennsylvania. I'm a park ranger for a state park and the PA game commission. I was working one day and something I've never seen before stared me down as I was hiking to a remote campsite. I have never seen a deer act like they did. They were terrified, unlike anything I've seen in behavior. I have seen coyotes and even bear but this was something different. I've heard the term dogman before reading this, and after speaking to a fellow Native American friend, he said he had heard of similar creatures. I have to say that the incident I have been followed a couple of times. I'm only writing this to you because my father said that I will be helped by reaching out to somebody who knows what they're talking about. I have vowed to carry a weapon with me every time I go out, even on personal occasions. If you decide to read this, Maybe your audience can offer some advice. I was working in the Redwood National Park at the time, and only worked the night shift. I had never experienced a bear encounter in the park, although I heard people have been seeing them a lot lately. My shift was on a Friday night from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., so I had time to do my thing and catch up on anything. Usually, I carried a radio, a cell phone, and a gun. The radio was a base radio that could reach the visitor center in case of an emergency. The cell phone was specially designed for some communication so I could know who I was talking to. It wasn't exactly a personal cell phone or a work cell phone. It was like and a cell phone they give you that has enhanced signal. The thing about being a ranger at night was you can get very lonely, and the visitor center was closed during the day and these hours, so only other rangers were even working in the park. There was a lot of traveling with nobody to talk to. The radio was key to know what the other ranger was doing and if they were nearby. I took my time that evening, doing my rounds and stopping to enjoy the scenery, even at night. It was one of the best perks of the job. Now, the visitor center was located on the west side of the park, and I would have to drive all my way around the west side to start my rounds. To make it to the west side, I would have to travel through the Dipsy Trail, which is a very popular trail for mountain bikers and hikers alike. The trail is open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. At night, it was very dark and foggy. I only got a radio call a couple of times during my shift, but never did I see another ranger. As I was driving along the Dipsy Trail, the fog was thick and you could not see up the road ahead. As I was traveling about 20 miles an hour and would use the brake lights of the car to see where I was going at some points, and as I came around the corner, I saw what I thought was a mountain biker standing next to a tree, making note of him. I made a comment out loud about how he should not be here and the trail is closed. As I got closer, I noticed that this person wasn't actually wearing any clothes and was facing the tree. It was maybe about three feet away from the fog light of the car and their back was facing me. I asked out loud several times, and the person did not move. All of my lights were on now. I was now about 10 feet from this person, and I kept asking if they were okay and if they needed help. I began to get scared. I asked again if they needed help, and turned on the siren. I still did not get a response. Something was wrong. I got to about 5 feet away, the tree the person was standing next to. That's when this person just fell over. They were dead, and their face had been carved away. Literally, like with a knife. Think of how a pumpkin is. It was as somebody had burrowed into their skull and the face was gone. I have no idea how it was possible that they were actually standing up and how they managed to fall over. It reminded me of something that would happen to you in a horror movie. But I bailed out of there. And after describing to the other rangers what I saw, 
they agreed to stay at the station with me, and we'd go back to the trail to check it out. So, we all ended up going down there within 10 minutes. The area where I originally saw the person on the trail. But as I got closer to the same spot, now I saw a different figure. A naked woman. I slowed down, and she began looking in my direction. The only issue is, I passed right through her, and her eyes began glowing red. Right after she passed my vehicle, or should I say walked through my vehicle, and then disappeared entirely. Me and the other rangers were pretty scared and freaked out. We weren't exactly sure what to do. We just wanted to come out of the park. We wanted to be done. And, by the way, there was no accounts of that body anymore. As a ranger, I should have called the body in and got for help, but I was so spooked that I couldn't help but leave. This is when we went to retrieve that body that I'm talking about. The one with the burrowed out face. There were no signs of it. No signs of blood, attack, a murder, anything. Not even a trail or feet marks. It's as if the body just mysteriously disappeared. And then the apparition of the naked woman with glowing eyes. I'm not sure what to think about that. Last I heard, and last any of my colleagues have heard, this trail and park is not haunted. But either way, I'm not sure what to think about it. Maybe it was a demonic encounter. Maybe it was something else. I've been to many training sessions and have seen other rangers have paranormal experiences before. I've thought about telling somebody outside my work circle. I've just been very hesitant to. People will probably laugh at me, potentially think I'm crazy. But I witnessed something that I did not understand. It changed me forever because it scared me and proved to me that those things sometimes you see in horror movies are true. I've thought a lot about this over the years, and have finally decided to open up and talk to somebody. So, my sighting details seeing a large, bipedal, unknown creature. I live in Portland, Oregon, but I work at Mount Rainier National Park as a backcountry ranger. I would like to remain anonymous, so please refrain from including my name. On the night of the 5th of September, 2015, I was driving home from work after a busy day of trail maintenance on the ARA Loop. I was about 15 miles east of Paradise at about 1.30 a.m., and I was doing about 50 miles per hour. I was driving on the Lewis River Road. It was a beautiful night, and I was enjoying the drive. I had my headlights on high beam and was watching my mirrors to avoid deer as they frequent this area and in the past, I've nearly totaled my car in the winter when a large buck jumped out. As I rounded the corner, coming out of the forest, I noticed a large dark figure on the side of the road. Now immediately, I'm on edge, because in my mind, I'm imagining this being a large buck about to jump out in front of my car, and I could not afford the time to make another car payment. I immediately slam on my brakes, because I wasn't sure what was going to happen and I realized it was not a deer because this thing was standing beside a tree on the road shoulder. So I slowed down even more. I began to focus what little eyesight I had on this creature and I could see that it was very, very large. Probably about eight feet tall, covered in shaggy long hair that looked very thick and matted. It was hard to tell in the lighting conditions and shadows any real details of the face, but I could tell that it turned to look at me directly and then stopped and stepped off the road into the field. It was obviously aware of my presence and did not seem surprised by me. It continued to walk away from the road into the field, lumbering on two legs. I'm telling you now it was not a bear because it never walked like one. It reminded me of a person on two legs the entire time, the comfortability of bipedally walking. It walked for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half before I could not see it anymore. I was in shock, to say the least. I drove very slowly for a minute to see if maybe I could see it again, but I eventually lost sight of it. Even though I was in shock, I did not feel too scared. I did not feel threatened. I was just in total awe at what I just saw. It was so huge and very obviously not a bear or a person in a suit. Why would somebody be out here in the middle of nowhere? It also walked very naturally on two legs, 
I went back to the spot the next day and measured a tree it was standing beside. That's how I know it was around eight and a half feet tall. I've been a park ranger for the better half of eight years now and have never seen anything like this before in my life. I have had other interesting experiences though in the backcountry, but they were mostly while working and related to the environment. People are always throwing around the term Bigfoot, but I have no idea what this was. I'm ignorant. Please excuse me, and thank you for your time. If you can provide any information, that would be most helpful. Thank you again. First, let me just say, I am a former U.S. park ranger. I have been assigned to various parks all throughout the USA back in 1991. I was assigned to the Isle Royale National Park in Lake Superior. It was my job to patrol almost 100 miles of backcountry and write up reports on the conditions of several trails. I would rotate my patrol route every couple of weeks to avoid getting too familiar with the backcountry and kept myself alert. During the first part of late August, I rotated to the west end of the island to the Greenstone area. The Greenstone is located on the northeastern part of the island. It is like a pile of massive rocks on a point overlooking late Greenstone Cove. The area around this point is a well-known spot for the Native Americans for making tools and other items from the Greenstone and for fishing. The area is also reputed to be very haunted, and some of the stories are quite horrifying. This place is covered in very thick spruce forest, and there are only a couple of trails that even cut through. One of the trails is called the Greenstone Shore Trail. It cuts through the forest and is on the shore of the lake. It is a very isolated area, and the only way in or out of the area is by barge or via the Greenstone Shore Trail. So I was patrolling the southern point of the trail when I came across a clearing. I stood there and began to hear a very strange noise. The noise sounded like a long, low moan that changed to a very loud sputtering noise. I stood there and listened for a few more moments and decided that I better go check it out. I walked into the clearing, skinning the area. I could see a series of old fire pits in the area and something dark lying on the ground about 50 feet away. It was heavy. Whatever this was, which I initially thought was a bear, it turned out to be on four legs. So I took out my binoculars and looked, but couldn't really see any details on the animal. I thought it might be a bear, but its shape was beginning to look too big. I stood there for a while, as it was still sputtering and moaning, and keep in mind it was kind of tucked away in tall grass. I began to believe that maybe this was a sick or injured bear or animal, so I ventured around to see if I can get a better view by getting closer to it without directly in its line of sight. When I did, the animal disappeared entirely, but the groaning sounds stayed. There's no way something this large could have gotten up and disappeared from my sight that easily. Something was off. I could feel it. After it disappeared, the woods around me went completely silent, and I had this creeping feeling in my stomach that I needed to leave now, that I was in imminent danger. And then, the horrifying thought raced through my brain. What if it was a ploy? What if I was dealing with a large predator, and that was just a way to lure me into the open where I'd be more vulnerable? As these thoughts went through my head, I did not think rationally or clearly. I just got out of the area and did my best to quelch my emotions. Now, two days after the incident in question, I was in the ranger station, filling out reports, and the dispatcher began yelling for me to come over the radio. It was a message from the Greenstone Ranger Station. There had been an accident a couple miles north of the Greenstone Station. They required my assistance. I got on the boat and headed over there. I met two other boats from the station, and we headed to where the accident occurred. Apparently, four people in the accident who were injured were being chased by some large black animal that they were convinced was Bigfoot. They explained that it had a large snout, huge teeth, and large claws. We took their statements. They were so scared and shaken up, they had an accident by getting into their boat, smacking it into each other. 
Fortunately, they're all okay with only minor injuries. But the boats, well, that's a different story. I often reflect back and wonder if there's any correlation to the large figure I saw in the tall grass there in that meadow and what they described as seeing. From the distance I was at, it was really hard to tell what exactly I was looking at. Even though it resembled a bear, I could tell it was a large animal. But because of how it was laying and how much of its body was truly concealed, there was no way to really know what it was for sure unless I got closer. But the strange groaning and moaning sounds, I'm not sure how to describe it or really write it off or rationalize it. I've heard bears make noise, even deer, dying and injured, but this was different. It was so bassy in tone and the sound was different. I guess it's safe to say that I'm a little creeped out by the whole thing. And after taking these witnesses' statements, I really don't believe them to be making up stories. They were all visibly shaken. The one man, the bigger older man, was actually shaking really bad and he almost had tears in his eyes as we were all detailing the same story. Even though this was many years ago now, it sticks with me, just like it happened last week. I have spent 20 years in park and recreational management, currently serving in the National Park Service as a superintendent. I have seen and heard many strange things while working in the backcountry. This email is to report an encounter I had with a cat thing while in the backcountry. This occurred during the winter of 2010 and going into 2011. It was in the early afternoon. I left the ranger cabin and traveled four and a half miles up the trail to a backcountry emergency shelter. This shelter is a replacement of the original shelter, which burned down in the late 1980s. It had been seen by many uses, but the last six years especially, I had really been the only person to stay there. I arrived at the shelter by 4 p.m. and immediately got my gear outside. I was working on my snowshoes when I heard a distant bellowing howl. It was a howl that I had never heard before. I am very well versed in all the howls of wolf, coyotes, and other animals, but this was different. Way different. It was much deeper. Had a lot more growl and distortion to the timbre. It was definitely not a wolf, elk, bear, or any mammal that I'm familiar with for the matter. The noise was a bellow howl that went for about a minute with a slight pause between the bellows and howls. It was a very, very strong howl. But also, as terrified as I was by hearing this, I was curious. I grabbed my pack and my snowshoes and began walking toward the source of the vocalization. I walked about three-fourths a mile to a large rise on the ridge line. As I walked towards the ridge, that's when I began to notice several deer carcasses. Deer, by the way, are abundant in the area. I see them all the time. We actually have several types, but the most common is white tail. I immediately thought something was hunting them. Upon closer inspection, the three visible carcasses I've seen were very horribly mutilated. What's also more strange is that the corpses were not eaten on. They were just ripped up. The doe, the closest one that I was to, had her neck ripped open and her head was missing. Something visibly tore this animal's head off but there were no bite marks or claw marks on the animal. It just seemed like a brutal kill. Something wasn't right. As that thought is in my head, I hear and notice the bellow slash howl again, and this time it appeared more powerful and closer. I decided to get up the ridge and see if I could see what was responsible, assuming that the bellowing and howling was the creature responsible. I quickly moved up the ridge, but as I neared the top, the bellows and howls happened again, only this time, they were getting even closer. I approached the ridge top and heard the noise coming from a small meadow. As I looked across the small meadow, I noticed this creature. It was standing on the other side of the ridge top. It was this strange looking thing. I call it a cat because that's the closest that it resembled, but it was far too distorted, far too different. It was much more like if you mixed a person or a human being with a lion and a mountain lion. I very visibly remember the brindle coloring and the mane around its neck. 
it was definitely larger than a mountain lion. The animal was facing my direction, but at about a 45 degree angle. I could see its front quarters very well. As I watched it, staring at it intently, it never appeared to move, and the sound it was making completely stopped. And the entire time I was staring at it, I was trying to process what animal am I seeing, but I could not make it out. It was on all fours and looked very, very strange. I want to say I was probably there for five minutes, but in actuality, I was probably only staring at it for maybe 30 seconds, 45 at most. The thought had occurred to me that I better leave now before whatever this giant cat is notices me and decides to make me its next meal or do what it did to me like it did to the deer. Now, as I'm going down the ridge line, I could hear something coming up the hill behind. I turned around and looked up the trail. There were two deer running. When I turned back down, I could see the cat now, moving in my direction. So I walked quickly to the far edge of the ridge and saw this thing now walking about 75 yards. As it walked up the hill, it would stop every few steps and look back at me. It continued this walking looking behavior until it was completely out of sight far over the ridge line. I stayed there for about five minutes and I never heard it bellow or howl again after that. I very hastily walked back down the hill, packed up my gear and began my six mile walk back all the way around the cabin, the long way. I've never seen this creature again and I think it's safe to presume that this was the creature's territory and it was hunting the deer because the portion of backcountry I was on, that entire ridgeline is very untouched. It was a portion even I'm very unfamiliar with. As the years have gone on, I've told a few friends and colleagues. They're convinced I just saw a mountain lion from far away, but, but if it really was a mountain lion, we're talking about a severely deformed mountain lion. I know what mountain lions look like. This was not it. I have seen many mountain lions in my career. I do think it was hunting the deer on the ridgeline, and possibly I irritated it. I've also come across several other eyewitness stories similar to mine describing a creature very similar in the National Park Service but have never come across any real concrete evidence of its existence other than my one eyewitness story that I have myself. And this is why I'm sending you my email. I've never heard of any cryptid sightings in the Smokies but I have seen and heard of some several unexplained phenomenon Several of my co-workers have also at different times witnessed strange lights over the mountains at nighttime. In fact, there was one instance where a park ranger, a friend of mine, and his girlfriend saw a UFO over the park. I myself have never seen such a thing, but I take his word for it. He's an older gentleman, single, not married, and has no reason to fabricate any story, nor is he much of a storyteller or a jokester. He's also very, very serious, especially when he tells that story. He went into more detail and described it like a large black triangle craft that kind of hovered over the park and then just faded out, as in it just went translucent and disappeared. I know there's a lot of weird stuff that occurs out here, my sighting and experience included. Keep up the good work. I work as a seasonal park ranger here at Lassen National Park in California. I recently rediscovered your YouTube channel. I had forgotten it a long time ago. You might remember me. I was the individual who contacted you via email while I was a student at Sacramento State. I wanted to let you know that Lassen National Park, we've had a lot of strange sightings, including a supposed mountain goat, wolf-like creature. We have also had more than one eyewitness reported of a thing that had all the physical characteristics of a Bigfoot except it walked on all fours and was very, very ugly with a flat human face. In fact, one such sightings included my brother and I. We are both rangers and at the time, and at the time, we're also too working seasonally. One Friday afternoon, my brother and I who were working together came across a pile of scat of what we thought was a goat, but we knew it was not mountain goat feces. It looked different. We've seen mountain goats around here before, and the scat was much larger and was darker in color. 
It appeared fresh and still kind of wet. We have no idea what this could have been. There are no other animals in the park that produce scat this large. We also have had people report to us that there is a massive black wolf in the park that's twice the size of a regular wolf. People have claimed that it had red eyes and was the size of a large, large Great Dane. And this, of course, has still been unconfirmed. I've seen a lot of strange things in the park myself that I have no explanation for what they could be. There was even a woman that had reported saying what she referred to as Goat Man, but after going on a search, we could not find anything. Of course, as weird as it is, when we go looking for these things, the woods always seems to have a way of going quiet and getting this feeling like you're being watched. Now, that might just be my paranoia, but I feel a little more level-headed than letting my paranoia control me like that and just imagining things. I'm not exactly sure what all these sightings are about, and I simply don't believe they are all just simply misidentifications. And speaking of which, there was a gentleman I spoke to about seven months ago who was over on the east section of the park, and at one point or another was actually attacked by what he describes as a bipedal coyote or wolf. He wasn't sure which. This thing actually tore a side in his tent during the nighttime while he was sleeping and attacked him. It tore his arm pretty well, and fortunately, he did not have to lose his arm, and they were able to save it. But he shot this thing right in the face multiple times until it finally fled. He said, had he not been heavily armed with his Glock, he has no idea what would have happened. He probably would not be alive. He said this creature looked evil and was very, very big. But he kept saying coyote more than he did wolf, and said it looked very human in the way its eyes looked. Not in a literal sense, he described, but the intelligence, the intent behind what it was doing. He described it as if it was wanting to not only hurt him, but know that it wanted to hurt him. This simply put, it was just evil. Now, me personally, I have no way to explain that away. But I figured that you enjoy reports like that, so that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. I know there are a lot of weird things out here in the national parks, especially here in the state of California, judging by that episode you posted about a month or two back about all the California horror stories, which I find very intriguing, to say the least. Anyway, I have no explanations of anything that I've found or experienced. Maybe you do. This is a strange one. A little over a year ago, back in 2018, in the Grand Teton National Park, I had an encounter with a creature that I simply cannot identify. I have searched and scoured online and have not found anything that resembles the being that I saw. I try not to speak of this often as fear I will be thought of as a loon. During the summer of 2018, I was working for the National Park Service here in the Grand Teton National Park in the Inner Lakes District. This was my first year in the position. I was working at a campground specifically on Blacktail Butte, just outside the main park. I was busy closing the campground and had two other co-workers there with me. As I was counting the money from the evening before, I heard a very distinct but strange unmistakable howl to the west of the campground. The sound seemed to be coming from the base of the mountain. The campground is located at the base of Blacktail Butte, which is a very small mountain just on the outskirts of the park. I could see from my location that the sound was coming from the direction of the mountain. There were three other campgrounds, also located near the mountain, so I could see all the other campers and employees in the area for the most part. There were no campers with their dogs in their campsites, so that was checked off, nor were there any dogs visible. I was trying to determine what this howl was, or if maybe there was a wolf, but the howl was unlike a coyote or a wolf. It was very different. As I was listening, I heard a second howl, similar but not exactly the same. I have never heard a coyote or a wolf make a sound as this. It's hard to describe, really, but it was similar to the recording of the Bigfoot calls that you can hear online. Off the top of my head, 
I want to say they are the Ohio Calls. You could look it up, I'm sure it's on YouTube, as is everything anymore. But I continued to listen, and as I did, all of the other rangers in and around the area also did too. I began to ask the other co-workers if they had heard the sound, but apparently nobody had heard the sound from their location. I felt silly, so I kept my mouth shut. After a few moments, I heard a very loud howl in the same location as the previous two, but this one was closer. I again asked everybody if they had heard it. Almost instantly, they were acting strange and told me no they had not. And they were acting nervous and quick-eyed. Something tells me that they had heard it and were just not wanting to say anything. What did they know that I did not? And just as I was almost ready to pack up and leave, I heard a coworker on the radio calling with him for a minute. As I was leaving, I could see a person walking in the area of the howl, staying in the tree line but moving steadily up the mountain. I got closer, asking my coworker if he had seen anybody in the area, as he had told me that he too had been walking around and patrolling the area. I informed him that the sounds that I had heard, I was not sure what they were, but they were coming from the back part of the campground. He got nervous almost instantly the second I brought them up. He got close to me and whispered in my ear that he's pretty sure he saw a tall, dark figure moving around on the back section of the park, but says he did not get a good look at them and claims he did not want to, that he felt immediate danger and fear. Now, as he's speaking with me, I could tell from his voice and apparent body language that he was concerned, to put it mildly. I drove a little bit further, trying to see what it was that he was seeing. He had told me it was on the back section of the park, and that is exactly where I went. After a little while, I'm pretty sure that I saw what it was he saw, because what I saw was approximately seven feet tall and had the same dark color. I tried to get a better look at it, but I could tell it was right near the edge of the tree line. It had already moved into the tree line again from coming out of a large meadow. I even told my other rangers, and they would not speak to me about it. In fact, one told me to stop talking about it if I knew what was good for me. This particular ranger has not spoken with me since, and refuses to. After I seen this thing go into the tree line, I decided not to follow it. And another thing to keep in mind is, it was actually pouring down rain during this time, and even though the ground was hard, there should have been tracks, because I did go back later on to look, and I did not see any, especially in the wet portion of grass where I saw this thing entering the tree line. It was very strange how I did not find any tracks at all, boot or tracks of animals. After returning back to the office, I kept hearing the howls again almost all night, and this time, there were multiples. One, coming from the north end of the campground, and the other on the east. My belief is that there was two of these creatures communicating back and forth with each other. So now, if I ever hear or experience anything strange, I don't really talk about it to my colleagues because, for whatever reason, they seem so hellbent on keeping everything a big secret or conspiracy, something I'm not really sure why, but they refuse to talk about it. Perhaps the refusal of acknowledgement of this existence helps them better in day-to-day -day life coping, but for me, I'm trying to get down to the bottom of it. I would also lastly like to assure you that what I saw was simply not a person, nor is it a person in a costume because what I saw could not be explained. For it to be a person, the proportions were so off and distorted, it would not make sense, and the movement alone was different. I also apologize in advance for not having the most descriptive story and account, but you get what you get. Thank you greatly for taking the time to listen to my story. I'm a ranger in the National Park Service, and I'm posting this to you from my Facebook. I was flipping through your posts while on lunch break and saw a few paranormal ones and missing 411 ones. I am very experienced and have seen many strange things in these parks, things I cannot explain. I've yet to see anything deemed paranormal or even supernatural. In my 20 years of experience, I have seen a number of strange things though. Many of them I can't explain. 
but I always have to be careful of what I label them as, and specifically, on paper, that they are natural occurrences, if you understand what I'm saying. My husband is also a park ranger, and he has seen more than I have, and has witnessed more things than he can explain. Currently, I'm on the East Coast, and my husband is on the West. We have parks in common, and we have parks that are different. I'm also kind of a park naturalist, and I've been in many places in the parks that most people have not gone to. The thing that struck me the most is that I could not explain was when I worked at Canyonlands NP. I was working at the island in the Sky Visitor Center. It was around the time when Canyonlands National Park was getting a lot of attention due to the status as a dark sky sanctuary. I had many people from the public come and ask me questions about how to see the night sky. One couple came in and spent quite some time talking about the stars and planets. The man of the couple, probably around 30 years of age, left for a moment to go to the bathroom. His girlfriend asked, are we close to a Skinwalker Ranch? I was quite taken aback and replied, we are quite a distance away, probably over an hour's drive. They told me, that's a good thing because they are not what they say they are. I asked her what are they, and she said they were stalking, manipulative, dangerous creatures, but she could not tell me much more. She acted very strange and very fidgety, almost like a drug addict would while they were fiending. It was very strange behavior, but I doubt she was on drugs because she was very coherent, and even though what she was saying was creepy, it wasn't exactly drug talk. We spoke for a few more minutes, then her boyfriend returned and they left. I still wonder about that encounter and what she meant. It sounded like she knew something. I've often thought about it. I would love to know more about what she knew about them specifically, but I attribute that encounter to a different thing altogether. Again, I've been doing this job for well over 20 years, and while I've had some strange experiences like that, I've never exactly seen a ghost or some sort of demon. Before I end this email, I'll tell you about one more story that I have. So, this is around the same time. I was working night and actually walking back to one of my vehicles. Not my personal vehicle, by the way. And maybe about 35 yards into the woods, I heard my name being called by a voice that sounds very familiar. I could not quite put my finger on who it was, but I knew the voice from somewhere. But they were very softly calling my name from in the woods. Immediately, this struck every wrong chord in my body because I knew that whoever this person was did not mean well, if you catch my drift, and how do they know my name? They were clearly stalking me. Something, everything about the situation was bad. I called out to them, showing my light and my gun, demanding they show themselves. I realized, once I stopped talking, just how quiet the night was. Even the crickets had ceased their noise making. I quickly backed my way to my vehicle and drove out of there. I don't know what that was or who that was, but I'm glad I did not find out. I wanted to pass this along to you. I saw this post specifically on Facebook and kind of wanted to share and talk to you. See, I work as a ranger here in Arizona and I went backpacking to the Grand Canyon this past October. I put on the most conservative clothes I could, thinking I would blend into the landscape the best. I did not even shave for three days. And kidding, I'm just trying to make it funny, lighten the story. I had a three-day permit and just hiked into the Grand Canyon hiking along the southern rim and camping at the bottom. I day hiked back and out at the end of the permit. I did run across more people than I thought I would. Figured I would have better chance of telling my story to people who aren't from around here. So I kept my permit for three days, stopping in the El Tovar Hotel for dinner. I decided to sit at the bar and talk to the folks next to me, who happened to be Canadians. I told them I was a ranger and we were talking about the Grand Canyon and backpacking for a little while. Then, one of the guys who I was talking to told me, I had a really strange experience in the canyon a few years ago. I thought to myself, here we go. Okay, I'm going to ask him a bunch of questions, get some more details and write it down in my journal. 
He went on to say that they went into the Grand Canyon a few years back and were coming up the South Kaibib Trail, bouncing down the trail and enjoying the day, when his friend saw a man running from a fire behind him up the hill, very panicked and frantic. And he said to his friend, and this guy who was apparently barely clothed and had a very manic, crazy look to his face, went right by them, did not say anything, did not even acknowledge their existence. He said that his friend and him had a very weird feeling and kept moving. There was a river running along the trail and there was a bridge that goes over the river. They came across the fire department there putting out a campfire that had grown out of control. They almost wonder if the man that walked past them was the man who started the fire and was retreating. So, as they kept going, going down the trail, it was now beginning to get dark, about five miles. They were also about 6,000 feet. And they both saw a huge dark figure standing in front of a rock. It was blocking their way almost. What frightened them the most was lying against a rock. As they made their way down to the bottom, they both described a large dark figure, black skin, huge red eyes, about nine feet tall and moving on two legs, like a man. They just kept moving, trying to stay calm and get to the bottom. Again, it was also very dark, and they had three more miles to go. Once they got there to the bottom, they were knocking on the door frantically, and a park ranger came to the door, asking them if everything was okay. They weren't sure if they saw a bear or what, but I guess the ranger was convinced they just saw a large bear. Even though they were adamant about what they saw, and that it was not a bear or a misidentification, and how terrified and shook they were. I thought you might find their story interesting. They told me they never told anybody about it because they were convinced they were going to be the laughing stock. But they had also told me too, in conversation, they have some friends who are Apache and Navajo and both admit there's some pretty questionable things going on down in the canyon, even more so at night. It's probably best to stay away. If you want to contact me, feel free to. I just thought this would be interesting to you. I was a ranger, a climbing ranger, out the Algany State Park in New York from 2003 to 2008. This park is well known for its free-roaming bison herd and the number of also unsolved murders that occurred there the past 150 years or so. During the 4th of July weekend in 2007, I had an experience that I just could not explain. I was assigned to the eastern side of the park to staff the entrance booth and hiking trails on the other side of Route 98 from the main campground. There was also a designated picnic area that was quite further back in the woods. I drove into the park and parked my Hummer in the parking lot behind the picnic area. After sitting in the vehicle for a few moments, then got out to open the gate that leads to the picnic area. As I was walking back out to my vehicle, I noticed a family of four sitting on the table. They were in the process of unpacking their food. I greeted them kindly, opened the gate, and drove up to the booth. I was expecting that I would be the only ranger on duty for the rest of the weekend. I was wrong. I was actually the third ranger assigned there. I arrived a little bit before noon and one ranger had just left. It was a beautiful day and people were out in droves. I had quite a bit of traffic at one point. I was helping three separate groups of people, all with their own issues of some kind. There was a delay in water supply apparently, so I was calling utility companies to try and fix them. I also had to give two people different directions since they weren't sure where to go. I'm not sure how long I had been occupied with these tasks, but I was beginning to notice it was getting a little darker than usual earlier. The daylight savings time changed had just occurred and I was getting ready to check the woods on the other side of the picnic area. Then I noticed a car coming down the side of the road. The road was a secondary access and led to a small picnic area and the Algany Cemetery, which is quite old. I was surprised to see the car come out of nowhere, so I got back behind the booth and watched. It drove up to the area and stopped. I was puzzled because I thought the area was closed. The driver and the passenger got out, looked around and got back into the vehicle very suspiciously. They drove out of the area and out of sight. I immediately went to the booth 
and found the key to the radio and carried with us. I called the on-call ranger and told him about the incident, and the two seemed very sketchy, like they were looking for something. I also told him about the other rangers assigned to the area. He said there was nothing he could do until their shift ended at around 8 p.m. I watched the road for a little while longer and noticed the light was now getting dimmer. I decided to check out the woods to the west of the picnic area. The area was quite hard to access and required some bushwhacking. As I walked along the natural trail, I noticed now that most of the light was gone. I stopped and looked around, noticed it had now become very quiet, just about no sounds whatsoever. I began to walk more quickly. I had a bad feeling about being out there, alone. As I was making my way along the trail, I heard something walking towards me. I stopped and listened. I swear that I could hear breathing. I was scared, but somehow managed to get out my flashlight and turn it on. The beam of light illuminated the area in front of me, and I finally saw what was standing about 15 feet in front of me. The thing was 7 to 8 feet tall, made from a combination of fern skin. It looked like a mixture of bear and a human. I raised the radio to my mouth to call the on-call ranger again when it let out the most terrifying growl that I have ever heard. It raised its right arm and lunged at me, but I turned and ran as fast as I could down the trail. I knew that I only had about a quarter mile to go before I would reach the open meadow area. I was trying my hardest not to look back, but did so and saw the thing was keeping up with me with ease. I kept telling myself that it was just an animal and there was nothing supernatural about it, but that did not work. As I reached the open meadow, I tripped on a fallen log and went down. I was trying to get up and run when I heard it coming. A shot rang out, and I could hear the cracking of twigs and branches. Then, the on-call ranger appeared and told me to stay down. The thing was circling us, but it would not approach any closer. The ranger fired two more shots. We could hear the thing running away. He helped me up and walked me back to the booth. I injured my knee during the fall, but did not want to see any medical help. We had a mutual agreement together to keep quiet about this and to not tell our supervisors or anybody else we know. We have no idea what kind of professional retribution there would be or potentially career suicide. Since all this, I've moved to Georgia and I now work for a private security firm. I still do a lot of hiking and camping, but never really go off trail, if I can help it. Thanks for your time.